Hey, what's up coders? Welcome to One Little Coder. It is another day and we have got a new AI art generated model. And this is not just for art. It can create really photo realistic images. And that is really amazing. Realistic photos. It almost looks like you have taken an iPhone and created a portrait image. And that kind of image is possible with this new model. It comes from this company called Lexica.art. If you are not familiar with Lexica.art, it actually started as a stable diffusion search engine. But today they've got their own model. Unfortunately, unlike stable diffusion, they are not completely open source. They are going on the mid journey track where you have got go you're you're going to have a free plan and a paid plan. The model is called Aperture. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. The model is Aperture like the, the one in the camera. So Lexica.art has come up with a new model called Aperture to create realistic photos of human beings and I mean realistic photo of anything. And I'm going to show you how to access the model, get a, get better results, some tips and tricks. And then we are going to see what is the paid plan, what kind of cost structure that it has got. First, for you to access the model, go to z.lexica.art slash aperture. Once you go there and click, you have multiple ways to sign up. In my case, I've already done the sign up. I've logged in with Google. You can log in with Google or sign up with your email ID. But sign up is mandatory for you to use. Once you have successfully signed up, you will land on this place where you have got multiple things. For example, one, you can describe the image where you would give your prompt. Second, you can show your negative prompt here. You can give your negative prompt here. You can also play with the dimensions. Right now, you can see that it can go in this side, full landscape, 1024 by 512 to 512 by 1024. And you can stay somewhere in the middle as well, like whatever you want. But this is the, and like you, as you can see, their uh, resolution is quite, practical um, seeing from you know the photo industry so you either take a landscape or a portrait and somewhere in the middle and then you also have certain parameters like you can change the guidance scale uh, and also you have they've got uh, certain experimental settings like fixed double hits and uh, but actually it you know makes it slow now this is the interface that you have got you, you can also go to the history section and then see if you have generated any images before and that is quite helpful in my case, I've generated some images. Let me try to show you. So I could try to create an image um, with this prompt saying Polaroid portrait of Shah Rukh Khan, who is a Bollywood, who is a very popular Indian hero, if you're not from India. In the White House Oval Office with Marilyn Monroe, uh, color Polaroid historic photo. So now when I gave the same image, like the same prompt without negative prompt, I got images like this. You know, you have this problem of double hits, like you can see that it tries to put Shah Rukh Khan in two different places, but also you can see the skin tone. It's very artificial. It's very mannequinish, like a very wax, waxish. But when I actually added certain negative prompts, which I'll show you, then you can see that the skin quality has improved. Um, I mean, this picture, it has actually messed up the hair cell. That's a different topic altogether. But you can see the change in the skin tone, the lighting over here, it's more realistic. And that's why it is very important for you to also add negative prompts, even if you are using this model. I think negative prompts are becoming very integrated as part of our AI um, photo generation toolkit. I have a separate video on negative prompts for Stable Efficient 2.0. I'll link in the description if you want to check it out. So overall, this, this looks good. Um, you can see how it looks. I've got a prompt and I've got a negative prompt. So the negative prompts are very simple. Um, again, ugly, I've got, um, ugly is a very controversial negative prompt. A lot of people have told me that, you know, what do you mean by ugly? But ugly is there. Mannequin, doll, 3D. So these are certain negative prompts that it can help you. I also noticed that um, the, this, this model, Lexica's Aperture model, does not mess up with fingers as much as the base default stable diffusion. I guess Aperture still uses stable diffusion. That's my understanding. But you can see that it doesn't mess up with fingers a lot. I tried a couple of images. You can see that it, it messed up a little bit here, but it doesn't mess up as much as. Um, one thing that I felt is maybe their training data or the, like the new fine tuning data doesn't have a lot of Indian, um, a lot of Indians. I, I'm not sure. Because another popular prompt that I tried is Virat Kohli, who is a very popular Indian cricketer. But this looks like Virat Kohli, but this is not Virat Kohli. So I can very well say that Virat Kohli, this is not Virat Kohli. So you can see um, even this image is slightly closer like Virat Kohli, but this is exactly not Virat Kohli. The image quality is amazing, but I think it does something with the prompt. 
um when it tries to match with the prompt so maybe we can change with the guidance scale and then try but um you can see that like i wanted a professional picture of virat kohli uh, the picture is quite good it almost feels like you know i've taken it with a very high quality photo team but it, the face doesn't look like virat kohli proper that that is where it is but let us try out few examples ourselves so i can go here and then say portrait of portrait of barack Obama in front of uh, Burj Khalifa and then let's generate the image so this is going to be a slightly portrait image and then we can see how it changes with the um, negative prompts and all those kind of things so i try to create portrait of Barack Obama um again you can see the skin tone uh, you can see this this doesn't look like Barack Obama it messed up the face this definitely doesn't look like Barack Obama this looks like a real selfie taken by Barack Obama in front of Burj Khalifa and even like it didn't mess up Burj Khalifa a lot that's a good aspect but this is like the perfect picture but again you can see the skin tone the skin tone is very artificialish so that's where our negative prompts can come to help us let's copy all the negative prompts paste it back and then click generate right now it doesn't have um, parameters like seed for us to do reproduce but this is what we have got positive prompt negative prompt dimension and guidance skill so let's generate again with the negative prompts and then see <laughs> and again like this is another problem which duplicates people so you have got barack obama smiling with barack obama in front of burj khalifa um, but again um, i i don't like you can see the difference in the skin tone between this skin and this skin i feel a huge difference there but still this is better than the previous image that we had got this is again better um, it doesn't mess up with the the physical dimensions a lot i mean you mean um, what do what do i mean by that it means like burj khalifa is actually very tall a human being standing in front of burj khalifa should be in that relative height and it doesn't mess up that a lot so that is good and uh, finally we have got one more barack obama so overall the pictures look good and it is very photorealistic and people have started trying it out with a lot of things for example i can say portrait of barack obama soviet flag as his uniform and then generate this image now this is where things get messed up actually um, i mean like in terms of um, philosophical and ethical discussion now you can generate images like this so you can generate images like this this is again quite a realistic image and once again barack obama there is another barack obama looking at barack obama so this is another very um, interesting image so now we can ask for more images like for example portrait of an indian girl um stand in front of stanford with let's say with stanford t-shirt with stanford hoodie and generate it and the thing that i felt here is um it is quite good in terms of creating portraits this is the indian girl um it also does text bad you can see stanford is not like this in fact this is not how the stanford t-shirt is but the images are quite realistic like let's say this is quite an angle like indian college girl maybe indian college girl and then we can generate it and again it's going to generate so it looks good uh, i mean the quality of the images look really good the depth of field looks good to me uh, i don't know if it does something with the de depth model but the images look good the characters look consistent to me i don't know if you can do like what people are doing character consistency with mid journey whether you can do here because like the girls look very similar to me um the, these are all things that we right now know but again it messes up with the prompts like for example because i told her i want an indian girl instead of a stanford t-shirt it actually took india's ashoka emblem and then put it in the middle of the t-shirt so it does not i don't think like it does as good job as mid journey in terms of understanding the prompt but it is still creates very photo realistic image and this is just yesterday it has been launched and then you would see a lot of improvements without any doubt now we are going to get into the final part which is the pricing section so i want to I want to talk about the pricing here so when you go click pricing you can see right now you can start using um, you can start lexica aperture model for free and uh, the free plan is 25 generations per month but they are going to add a paid plan and the paid plan is going to be like 10 dollars per month 30 dollars per month i know this is like very new and it is going to go through a lot of changes but as of now as we speak 100 images per month 10 dollars per month um 
i think they are targeting an industry where people generate photorealistic images like uh, people who do studio photo shoots i think that is their target audience doesn't look like a normal person would be their target audience but I, i'm not sure like i'm not sure like with uh, stable diffusion with a lot of open source tools whether people are willing to pay 10 dollars per month for 100 generations but we have seen tools like avatar ai um tools like profile picture have created have uh, charged more than 10 dollars like 30 dollars for 100 images for your own image so i don't know if they are going to take the dream booth route where you can upload your own image and then generate as well so all these are not very clear what is their road map but as of today as it stands now this is what it is and uh, this is the paid plan that they have got and overall this model looks really amazing i would uh, definitely recommend you to check it out and second this is this is very interesting uh, taking us into a new space about creating a very realistic high quality images you can i i just showed you demos with human beings but also you can try it out with cars and all the other things to create really good depth of field images um i hope this video was helpful to you in learning about lexica.arts aperture model if you have any questions let me know in the comment section otherwise see you in the next video happy prompting